Yes, Nanda Gopal Sahu. To speak on the topic waste to wealth, a clean approach to the conversion of solid waste into value added products and their application. Thank you, sir. Time will be 40 minutes. Can you speak this little bit? Okay. Okay. Saudi. So, the place is 30 minutes. 20 minutes for the movie. 30 minutes. Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you, Chairman, and thank you, Professor Murak. It has been my uh, collaborator and like my father also. And thank you for your invitation to present uh, uh, my work. But anyone, initially I told that I am not able to join the, uh, this meeting, but he's my good friend and mother, so that's welcome and I'll present and thank you. So you know, I'm not uh, going to uh, discuss uh, interaction more. Uh, because I know everybody is waiting for the cultural program and dinner and exist. So, today, to at least, my topic is always to wealth. So, actually, basically, you know the, how you can control or how you can, you know, uh, segregate collection, segregate, and you can develop some technology to convert. Solid waste to valued products. But basically, actually, uh, if they say solid waste, the out of solid waste, you know, the more problem to arise from waste plastics. And basically, you know, there are two types of, if you can categorize the two types of uh, waste plastics, one is the biodegradable, one is the non biodegradable. For the biodegradable, there is no problem to control it, but for the non biodegradable, it is very difficult to uh, collection and segregation and the really uh, to conversion of the fluid product. And you know, uh, sometimes it is very difficult actually to uh, control uh, the, you know, um, producing the waste plastic. But question may be arise, you know, why not the government and the Production of the plastics. But it's difficult. Because you know that every year, uh, every year, year food, that is near about uh, 10 to 11 percent for the production is increasing. Uh, because of the, uh, you know, the easy process and uh, because of the durability and also can use in the uh, every field. So there is a uh, packaging, automobile, technical, then package, and they have not only that, you know. Our even uh, see our homes, uh, you know, the kitchen basically is in case of our uh, you know family in the markets they can buy the utensil and it's all are made by plastics. But not only the problem of plastics, problem is our money. Even after use, we can throw the plastic here and there. And if we can throw the plastic here and there and there, there is a Many problems will be arised. And basically, you can know where you can go to the morning um, work, you can see that some work are also burning the plastics. And if you can burn the plastics, there is a more toxic as we evolve and go to the environment. Not only that, where you can throw the plastics, you know, sometimes you that choke that they enter in the moon. And, and also, you can see actually in the road, and then just, uh, you know, the cow. Basically, the cow, they get eat the plastic and the food and stomach and, stomach and they can die. And so, basically, we can destroy actually our uh, ecosystem. So, how we can save our environment and simultaneously how we can recover some products. And you know, that is actually situation in our. Uh, area that is in the Naita, actually, the even though Naita is a beautiful city, but because of the lot of tourists come to Naita, they can throw the plastics and here and there, and you can see that in the 
And also, you know, without uh, when you get through the plastic without a uh, leak also, so that we uh, are a leak in the electronics, we can also eat the plastic that the food and take a stomach and die. Not only that, you know, we get about five million cows around the in the road, and they get the same uh, situation actually. You can see that uh, in uh, 2021, you can see the industry in the valley. Uh, there are about 71 kg of waste, including plastics. Uh, that is often called the stomach, but uh, really you know the food that any man uh, later. So, you know, uh, because of the plastics, how we have to destroy our environment and we do that now. Yeah, also, you can see there is another need to <coughs> The microplastics found in piece of Alakananda Limpa. Microplastics. But you know, for, that is, you know, there are many technologies actually in there. The from plastics to uh, uh, fuel, and also know that, uh, you know, uh, they can uh, build up plastics and build up roof. But initially, it is very good, actually, idea. We can use the plastics to, for uh, road construction, but you know, so after some years, this plastic is coming to the microplastic, microplastics, and the microplastic, if we can inhale, as we can put them to the wall. So that's why, uh, also uh, I saw one video, you can see the Italian river in the Nima, the Nima is, and from this river, actually the nearby village is drinking, it's a supply of drinking water. But you can see that in the monsoon time. Yeah. Yeah, it's working. 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 Yeah, these are plastics. Yeah, this is because of plastic. So you can see how the plastic is going to be the water. So we have to save our environment because of that we have to develop some technology. What is it like all the plastic we can put up? And you can see near about 26,000 pounds of the generator every day in India. And out of 26,000 tons, and near about 60 percent, near about 60 percent is collected. And out of 60 percent also, near about 60 percent is recycled and other is not. So that is a statistic. So, uh, and you know that the different uh, cities. And this is the big reality for the way in the waste. And out of it, the demand plastics, you can see the LPT and ADP are about 76%, and what is you know of 83% and PPC is the 1%. So actually, our vision is to do how we can develop the same thing and the new technology I can use for the way materials for we call waste to. Well. And also, actually, you know, from our, our main objectives how to develop the dark invasion materials. Actually, you know, the polymer, polymer, you know, there is a percentage uh, of very small molecule uh, that is a monomer. And the polymer, you can see, there is a bad polymer carbon. <coughs> And this carbon, actually, we, why not you can use the dead carbon? And from this carbon, actually, our idea is why not we can develop the graphene based materials from this carbon? And you know that what is the graphene? So I'm not going to, uh, to discuss here. Many people already discussed about the graphene. Uh, so uh, that's okay. And you know the 
Graphene is everything is okay and it's even smart. Yes, no doubt. The problem is there. In the production, there is very difficult to develop the bulk production of graphene. And not only that, you know the graphene. And graphene is very costly. So if we can develop the graphene from the waste material, we can save our environment and also we can reduce the graphene cost. And because of that, it's a, it's a graphene cost, it's a high cost, you know that there is a limited application. So if we can reduce the cost, the daily graphene utilized in everywhere. And that is actually our objective. And first actually in 2016, you know, uh, I joined uh, my university in 2013 and uh, I got a lab in 2015 and uh, I got a student in 2016. Yeah. And 2016 uh, February. And just uh, suddenly actually we got this idea. And uh, after that, just next year, we will market and you can fix it in the reactors. And this is the industrial spend are only 5,000 rupees. And using this unit actually, we tried hard to develop the graphene. And we successfully developed the graphene. And then we can propose the project to Ministry of Environment and Climate Change. And fortunately, we got the to develop the waste recycling machine. And you know, yes. That is actually our waste recycling machine. And how uh, you know, actually, we are taking that actually heat area, actually, our industry is the heat area. So, how difficult to install this kind of instrument that is actually we have to overcome the main challenges because nobody knows. If this instrument can install the department, the center, this will be for me, the environment or not. So, nobody actually. That can agree to install this uh, instrument, but for the year, uh, our labor and environment, we actually get a lot. We told that, okay, and for some we can install it and it's made the alternative. But that is actually history. Anyhow, we can install it, and uh, within two years, we started working in 2015 and 2018, we and actually. Um, we got also patent, and this patent also already concerned. And basically, what is this actually? This is the cutter unit. The cutter is the plastic, it's the base, not this. And next is the washing unit, we can wash the plastic. And next, uh, that is uh, the um, mix, uh, drying unit. This is you can dry the uh, plastic and that is the uh, mixing unit, but you can mix the plastic with the catalyst. So that is the most important part. How much catalyst we can add and what type of catalyst we can add. And next, this is actually pyrolysis chamber, where we can load the plastic actually this is the 100 kg capacity per day and holds actually reaction the nitrogen environment. And then it's actually there is uh, no uh, diesel engine. We can start to actually diesel engine, we can start the diesel engine after starting the instruments. Which is, you know, uh, uh, the equipment is going to you know, the temperature that is in 200 degrees centigrade. There is, you know, that some gas will be formed. There is a lower hydrocarbon and also the higher hydrocarbon. So, lower hydrocarbon. This comes to the, this is actually Europe. And when you can actually test it, that there is a already to the low hydrocarbon with a lot of not, that time actually we can stop the engine. And we stop the machine. And that time this gas will come with the main thing, but and run them. So that is actually big of our instrument. So that's why there are no gases, the toxic gases come out of the environment and put in the environment. And this high hydrocarbon is going to that this way, there is a filter and there is a condenser, we can get the uh, fuel, but we are not in the industry for the fuel, so we are in the industry for the graphite extract. Uh, after that, we can get the graphite extract from here, and there is a ball milling, 
and after you can drive up um, a powder trap and then just put your money in the secondary unit where you can heal it up to 800 to 900 degrees centigrade and then you can get the fuel drop in. But if you say this is a very easy process, yeah, this is easy because if I will just take it in two years time because ten bytes are this uh, and get a wish. You have to take a time to optimize <coughs> all things. If we can raise up five degrees centigrade, I we don't get the good quality of life. I will show you the whole uh, metal metal process. Yeah, mm, uh, that is again that is you know the everything and actually what the inventory patterns. Now this is the my sink. Right. Okay. Yeah. This is actually nano sign center, Kumar University of Utah. I'm a registered center. Yeah, this is actually for the demo actually. You know that is the uh, paint bottles where you can see the, the glass is a very small pieces. There is a uh, uh, 5mm to 6mm size. And after this, it is a washing, but nowadays we don't actually wash it because we can get the um, plastic. So you can direct the uh, glass and you can go to the uh, mixing unit where you can mix the um, plastics with catalyst uh, and next, yeah, uh, after getting the salon. Yeah, this is the actual power chamber showing the load the plastics. <coughs> yeah, all are ready. Well, actually, we have installed it that is uh, in about 60 and last, but now actually we have modified and modified. It's on, now this is going down the price, it's near about so, uh, 35 to 40 lakhs. We can install this. Yeah, this is a digital engine. We can start the machine. And yeah, that is the kind of filter. And next, you can get, uh, get the uh, good oil, and this is actually the only detail that the package starts up. And this is the ball milling. The crash into the so you can see the like a powder. This is the secondary unit. We can heat up to about 800 degrees centigrade and it is actually exploded. And when we get up in the bathroom, this is uh, the year near about, uh, we can say, there's two to five years of time. And this is actually with the uh, collaborators uh, of some work from the studies and some devotion. Yes, there? Yes, And actually, the year this study is some reason so that there is the one to two years of time. Yeah, that's the whole method. Yeah, you can see using this one actually, you can use a die actually, just to get a clear water and clear water. First, in the end, we move because we have taken the public and on papers on that. And not only that, uh, we can also uh, move the heavy metals. And it's a different quality of dropping in the area. So, that time, actually, my group is there. But uh, most, uh, I think, all all of them are there. But now, with the new students, like uh, Disa, yeah, that's my one student there. And 
I think maybe there's some news here, something like that. Yeah, actually, this language is already transferred to two industries. One is the uh, Hizab uh, Limited, who already installed uh, near about 500 kg uh, per day in the basement of the area. And one is the Sotisbal, and uh, they already installed uh, 120 kg. And not only that, actually, after successfully developed this technology, Ministry again gave us about 3.5 crore to install one uh, metal capacity plant in Noida city to remove all the waste, not only the plastic, or solid waste. But because of the you know, political issues, still <laughs> now I'm not able to install it. But I hope uh, within three, four months we can install the. Uh, yeah. But uh, the other person will be arise, and the other laughing is the food which started the laughing. But initially, when we started the work, it means, I told you that in 2006, you can see that this is nothing, it is like a car. And we did the experiment and experiment, and now initially it is very difficult to develop the conductive fuels. And actually, I forget to show that one video actually for the conductivity. Anyhow, now if we are getting it to conduct, uh, Raman and exactly now with the SPM and also APACM and, and also and the APM, we can say that yeah, the graph in order that we are getting the surface area near about 6 meters of high ground, 7 meters of high ground. So we are going to say that in about 3 to 4 years of graph in order that from actually you can see that uh, yeah, this is uh, also in the studies and I think this studies did uh, Dr. Sandeusa. And uh, also we have published a paper also. Uh, this is actually the A can from A the thickness of the layer is uh, near about the point uh, uh, eight nanometers. And point eight nanometers means that it's uh, near about two years of government. So I think the DFT studies also say that near about one to two years of government, but I don't believe this is the one layer of graphene because it's very difficult to develop the one layer of graphene using this uh, map. Only the CVD material can get in the one layer of graphene. And someone actually you can see that in the literature, maybe from there uh, prepare the hammer smash and they can show that it's a one layer of graphene, but I don't believe it. Because you know the product is that only one node was given to it to prove it. But it's not. But uh, for the bar you can see that there is a range. Anyhow, yeah, this is a PM, this is the uh, different <laughs> the characterizations. So I'm not going to the walls. And that this is the most important one. The cost, the production cost and end product cost. If we can run, you know, the 100 kg plastic per day, the all cost me about the 10,000 rupees. And from 10,000 rupees, what we can do? Near about, yeah. Now we have 15 to 20 percent, <coughs> liquid fuel 25 to 30 percent, and gas fuel 75 to 40 percent. So if you consider you can get the 100 kg plastic, you can get the 15 kg graphene, so the cost will be below 800 rupees per kg. And in the market, you know the graphene cost how much, I think. And not only that, it is our Beauty of our technology, one thing is you know, if we want more liquid fuel, we can want more graphics and we can the more gases. So, see products together. So, that is it. Because you know, the one industry still actually there, uh, um, there is a fuel move. And according to Garfield's views, it is actually. Yeah, this is the, actually the global Garfield market. Uh, you know the market uh, size is 2020, near about 84.7 million dollars, and for the 2020 is expected to turn 30, now this to 1188.8 million dollars. But issues are also there. Practical applications. If you don't find the any practical applications that times whatever you can prove it, it's the moment. 
Yeah, that is actually important. Still, actually, application of graphene. Where actually our group is working in the uh, composites, water purification, uh, fuel cell, solar cell, water uh, decomposes, drug delivery, and uh, energy. <coughs> but out of them, actually, you know, uh, we stopped the working on the fuel cell because of my, you know, setup. I don't know. And also solar cell, I stop it. Now it's a working on <coughs> polymer composites, water lubricants, and uh, product polymer, and energy storage you know, applications with super capacitors. And my another actually collaborator, Dr. Simon Mandia, is that she is a device person. Actually, our C group member. And the materials, Unrag is the theoreticals. And uh, Professor Sumon is actually the first guy. So that's why actually now actually presently actually we are uh, again receiving about 1.92 crore project to develop the solar for light with electric. Yeah, first application actually we have tried in cement concrete. Just only 0.5% include in the cement, the cement, cement, that the computation strength and the mechanical strength, the tensile strength, will increase near about uh, 42%. And actually, we got a patent from the two patents, from the auxiliary patent and the time. Yeah, this is, you can see the uh, near about uh, the increasing. Uh, you know, um, yeah, yeah, about the 42 percent, the compression state and the tensile state, and because of that, you know, we made the growth uh, using the uh, graphene. Now that actually, DRD also very really interested to make the road in the DRD area. So let's see the discussion is going on, and uh, yeah, also this waste plastic DRD actually graphene is possible for the super capacity. Application or not, we have tested it. This is, you know, we are getting uh, about. I think that it just will be. Now we are doing, we see that now about 377.4 that per gram and the power, uh, many density and power is about uh, 1009.5. Yeah, note that actually using our uh, graphing, actually, we have. We made the filter and we have positively testing the glass steel, but for an industrial scale, actually, we have sent same thing to industry, but unfortunately, one year left, but now we have done this. Time. And that is actually, you know, we have from the state university and the small university. Sometimes we feel the difficulty, but that's okay. Sometimes also we can go back and tell us. And all of that actually, uh, also we have developed actually graphing from the pencil lead. That is actually did this work in the middle of, uh, yeah, in There's actually the you know the pencil that you can use also the positive and negative electrodes, both electrodes you can use. And uh, you know that is the electrolyte you have taken, uh, you know, the uh, dilute H2H4 uh, or dilute H2H4. And in that case, you can apply the voltage in about the uh, 7 voltage and the 7 voltage anion uh, to dry it like anion. And uh, to, uh, to the positive electrodes and positive electrodes, we have used that we have pencil lead and we can go and enter the, uh, you know, inside the pencil lead and explode it. And you can see this is the explosion of the graphene, actually, and this is the real layer about 3 to 6 million layer of graphene. Yeah, not only that, actually, we have, I think, uh, time is here. Still here. Five minutes. I think because I have a lot of words, uh, I, I know you know all of you care also. So I move. Now that also actually we have developed the uh, 
Yeah, this is from the tire waste also. We have tried it and we have also developed it. And you can see that this is the characterization. And uh, this is actually device from the device. Most actually, we have uh, only the good application. And this is you can see the so the behavior. You can see in the about, or you can know, from, yeah, high density and power density in the about, and one for the three minutes. This is 0.66. What was crazy? And not only that, actually, the fruit waste also we have developed. Not only that, actually, uh, the air waste, uh, which past is, uh, but also the fruit waste, the thing from the kino field. Actually, already we have uh, developed the field of the fruit side. We have all the iterations, and we have published a paper. Not only that, we have also filed a paper. And that is actually the electrochemical tractations. Uh, you know, we, we got in there about uh, 642 uh, <coughs> grams. Yeah, and I think actually the, the operation of quantum dots mix actually the carbon oxide from biogas plant residue. Or biogas plant residue from what we have. Yeah, that is also with all the and and not only that also from the coconut and uh, coconut hash also we have developed it and this is already published and already we have filed the patents. <laughs> not only uh, that also graphene oxide actually and this also we have developed from oak fruit and this also we can say the production dope carbon oxide and then the fruit also and. That's actually so the uh, property, and I think this work also uh, Dr. Santi Husson and uh, Dr. Mulak also, uh, you know, with a DFP study, and from there actually we have got we know uh, this one actually. This production group, the Oxford, can be used two ways. One was, you know, the pollution, and another was, you know, and uh, bioimaging and other for the detail of the eye. And that's why actually we have developed it. This actually we can have uh, one drop of you know our materials. So we can see we can detect the iron up to sharing with level and that's why we have to develop to you know and uh iron sensing these tips and these tips near about the uh, particles. Yeah, this one actually for a reason was that uh, you know the uh, polymer composites. That's you know the polymer composite. You can use it in this way. Also, we can apply for the and the catalyst for the fuel cell applications. But I stop this one. Yeah, this is actually uh, my project is still going on. This is the three point five fuel projects. So I told you only the. Uh, with a musical of uh, and this is actually we have developed it that we are looking for the most of the machine and that is another project uh, we got from the deep sea and that is actually already completed uh, this month okay. and also another project is going to be with the GSP IP measures another project and this is actually now in the present work with uh, the and uh, collaborative uh, Professor Onura and uh, Professor Suman is the 1.92 floor project. And this is actually I developed my lab. I started lab from the zero and in 2016, but this is actually 2023 that I developed my lab. We have three floor of the yeah. Let me see the process. And this is actually my group. And most of uh, the blue technology in Malawi we have so. Yeah, this is my development. Uh, so we have a little of bandy agency, LMHS, NRDC, and DST, and professional media from Singapore, and professional 
good in the equilibrium studies. And knowing that we have also had a pattern also, and we have got the pattern. And we have in South Korea and Professor Suman Mahindia. We have also been good at the collaboration with Suman. And Professor Suman is on our UTA. And all my PhD students, they may have been with the PhD and now. So because of the hard working of students, I did all the data actually and all that experience. Everything I did was to get the Yeah, this is a very beautiful place. Let me be here actually. This is Namita. Yeah, sometimes you can see the snowing in the winter time. Now this is very cold. And then about 5 degrees centigrade, I think so. I think at night maybe 2 degrees centigrade. And it's a beautiful day, and it's a very clear of campus, you know, that you find places, not just in the same place. And the campus is, my lab is actually the high altitude, only my lab is there. And you know, the administration also has a place. So I can see it every day. महानुभाव मैं इसी प्रदेश का निवासी हूँ और रक्षा मंत्रालय में एक अहम भूमिका मिली है मुझे मैं आपके स्वत कार्य से बहुत प्रभावित हुआ हूँ आपको मुझसे क्या अपेक्षा है और देश की आप किस तरीके से सेवा कर सकते हैं Thank you. Yeah. Okay, um, can I have a privilege to ask two questions? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In terms of like the plastic, um, what type of, is it all kind of type plastic? Yeah, that is a very good question actually. I, I know the uh, last then. <laughs> Except these. I started with this is the pigeon work actually. We are working on the uh, piece. We send the waste there, and we bring the my students to work on that. But we just, but we just work in the same. But for the other actually, the different set of PT or pay actually which of plastic are getting the most compared to the use of the single plastic. Next, when you are putting the plastic, you are trying to remove the lid so that you can get rid of the dust. Yeah, yeah. Lid also we can use it. Are you? And that is, I see, we can do that in the video. Yeah, in the video part, now that also we can do it. Because it's an AGPA, basically an AGPA. Yeah, so that's the thing. The second question, I can discuss this one further, because I am involved with one best management company. They do the similar way. Usually they do the treatment with the sodium hydroxide. I don't know what's up with you. Sodium, no. Actually, I do not treat it as fine hydroxide. Sodium hydroxide, you can treat for the, I think it's for the PVC, right? Yeah. So my second question is that, have you done the cost analysis of the weight in terms of if you take 100 kg of plastic, how much you have been in the weight? Yeah, yeah. I'll tell you that it's an energy man for... No, I see. But like, if you take 100 kg of plastic one time, how much kilogram of weight is in the weight? So that's where we have to do plastic. So that's where we have to do plastic. Because this is the maximum capacity. Okay, then in other questions we will be discussing. The other session, okay. okay. Uh, the TNU you briefing session. Okay, the, thank you, Nandu Gopal Sound sir, for the nice invitation. Thank you. So, we have given a memento token to our gratitude. I request Professor Raksha.
that is talking to our owner of this country. Thank you, sir. Now, next, next speaker is um, Dr. Asis Bhatnagar, IT, IT Noida. Good evening all. First of all, I would like to thank... Uh, am I audible? Yeah. yeah. Okay. First of all, I would like to thank Professor mm -hmm. Anwar Shivastha for giving me opportunity to speak in front of you all. So, myself, Dr. Ashish Bhatnagar from JP Institute of Information Technology. And uh, I will be sort of extending a talk that, uh, that has been a wonderful talk that has been delivered by Professor Sahu. That is the application of graphene oxide because essentially he was showing that graphene oxide are everywhere. So, the... Multiple role of graphene oxide in the derivative in hydrogen storage application. 
So this is the brief overview of JP Institute of Information Technology. So whenever you are in Delhi NCR, I urge you to visit our institute for uh, having a look of the state of our facility in research we have. So I would like to dedicate this talk to my legendary supervisor, Professor Onshio. So actually we are supposed to have this session early morning tomorrow, but somehow due to a uh, problem from my end, so due to some emergency, we are shifting this talk at uh, this time. So Professor Ohen Shivastava, he's a legendary person who has started, he's the first person who started the work in the field of hydrogen energy in India. So if you want to know more about Professor Ohen Shivastava, you can go through the obituary that I have written as an editor at International General of Hydrogen Energy, highlighting the work done by Professor Ohen Shivastava in the field of hydrogen energy. So now let us start. So I'm skipping all this uh, general topic. We all know that uh, we have a problem of fossil fuel, we have a problem of uh, demand and supply of the crude oil, we have a problem of global warming, we have a problem of CO2 emission. So do we have solution for all this problem? Yes, we have a solution. And one of the solution is hydrogen as a fuel. As you can see through this animation, hydrogen can be produced by using sunlight. And if we store it safely and efficiently, then it can be used in a number of applications and after application it again burns back to the water. Production, then storage and then water. It starts from water, we get water. So hydrogen is a clean and green fuel which when stored and used efficiently gives us water back. So now, why we want to use hydrogen? I have shown you that it is a clean and green fuel and also it has an energy content three times more than the petrol that uh, we people are using. And uh, even if you use LPG or CNG, you will not be safe from the pollution. This LPG and CNG will also give us some percent of CO2 because it has carbon. But if you use hydrogen, you will get nearly 0% of emission that I have shown through this formula. I am skipping this part. So ultimately, the goal is that if you use hydrogen as a fuel, you will be on the happier side of the planet rather than on the bad side of the planet. Now, I have told, in a hydrogen economy, there are four main steps, that is hydrogen production, storage, safety and application. Mm -hmm. So in order to cut short the talk, I will only discuss about the hydrogen storage parts. I am explicitly work on hydrogen production and storage. So here I am discussing mainly about the hydrogen storage. So the first question arises that why we need hydrogen storage. So you know, the hydrogen has a density of 0 0.089. And as a material science people, you all know the density is not proportional to the volume. It has, low, it has lower density, so we need high amount of volume. So you can see that the volumetric density of hydrogen is too low, but its volumetric density is high as compared to other fuel. So that's why there's a problem in the storage of hydrogen. So we can store hydrogen either in the form of compression, that is the cylinder that you use to see the LPG cylinder, the CNG cylinder, or we can store hydrogen in the form of liquid hydrogen that ISRO used to do. But these two processes are very difficult because in compression you need high pressure for hydrogen around 600 dtm, 700 dtm, which is very risky. And in case of liquid liquidification, you need to attain minus 250 degrees, 3 degrees Celsius temperature, which is again very cost extensive. The other efficient mode is the solid state mode of hydrogen and people are using carbon, hydride, intermetallic compound for storing hydrogen. Now, we are using hydride. It is one of the prominent material for storing hydrogen. What do we mean by hydride and what do I mean by solid state storage of hydrogen? You will see this reaction. We will start from solid, that is magnesium. React hydrogen with magnesium and at a certain temperature and pressure we get magnesium hydride. So now you have stored hydrogen inside magnesium. You start with a solid and get a solid and you have hydrogen. So this is a solid state storage of hydrogen in the form of magnesium hydride. So this is a schematic that I have hydrogen stores, I am skipping it. Now, the idea is to replace this bulky cylinder and use the hydride tank, which is very compact and economical in the two, three wheeler. And my senior professor, Jay Singh, will tell you about all this vehicle on this one in the hydrogen center, BHU. So this all, Dr. Jay Singh will give you a highlight. I am skipping this part. So now, coming back to hydrogen. So actually this hydrogen problem is not India's problem. This is the problem of the whole world. So the international agency has floated some target that which type of material can be used as a hydrogen storage material. And according to that target, a material which has 5.5 percent hydrogen storage capacity. That means 100 gram of material should store around 5.5 gram of hydrogen. 
it should have a volumetric dissociation capacity of 45 gram hydrogen per liter hydrogen dissociation and absorption temperature of 100 to 150 degrees celsius pressure and then there should be some rivet like you're charging a mobile uh, you can charge the hydrogen in this uh, material up to 500 to 1000 second i urge you people to uh, learn i can say to look at this target carefully because throughout my talk we will discuss about this target now why I am using hydride that I have already told because it is safe and efficient mode. And amongst the hydride, I will focus here on the magnesium hydride as a hydrogen storage material. Why magnesium hydride? If you want to use a material, the first thing that you study about, the first thing that we can think about is the availability of that material. So magnesium is the eight most abundant element, and it has storage capacity of 7.6 weight percent. So naturally, you store 7.6 weight percent hydrogen. And the target is 5.5, so it is way above the target. But the problem is that it has high desorption temperature, 400 degrees Celsius desorption temperature. And if you want to use this hydride in a vehicle, you should have a temperature of around 100 to 150 degrees Celsius. Because if you are using hydride in the vehicle, you have to take the heat from the engine exhaust. There is no other source of heat. Because if you want the other source of heat, you will be adding penalty, cost penalty, and weight penalty to the vehicle. So you have to take the heat from the exhaust of the engine and that heat will not exceed 100 or 155 degrees celsius maximally so you have to reduce this temperature of dissociation of magnesium hydride to hydrogen to 400 degrees celsius and the reaction kinetics this is magnesium hydride to magnesium it's also very slow so these are the two aspects that you have to work upon and for, uh, for uh, addressing these two aspects we have used different catalysts different dope and uh, so this is what exactly the catalyst does it's uh, the green one are the Green one are the catalysts, and this is magnesium hydride. So, what catalyst does? It takes the electrons from the magnesium hydrogen bond and hydrogen liberates out, and again hydrogen comes in. So, this, this is what catalyst used to do. And uh, we have developed a number of catalysts like positive sulfate catalyst, CNT based catalyst, graphene TIS2, graphene CNT TI based catalyst. So, I was discussing only one of the works that is the effect of FPCO4 and FPCO4 tempered over graphene. For improving the hydrogen storage property of magnesium hydride. So now you can see this image. This is the micro TM micrograph of graphene oxide. You can see these are the graphene plates, six fold diffraction pattern of graphene. These are the TM micrograph images of uh, Fe3O4 nanoparticle, SCAD. Now you can see this Fe3O4 nanoparticle are highly aggregated. But if you template this Fe3O4 over graphene, you can see these particles are uniformly distributed and we have then used these three as a catalyst for magnesium hydride. You see, magnesium hydride catalyzes FPCO4 with FPCO4 graphene and graphene. And finally, what we have observed by using this FPCO4 as a graphene as a catalyst, we can able to lower the desorption temperature of magnesium hydride from near about 350 to 260 degrees Celsius. But the target which I have shown you is around 100 to 150 degrees Celsius. So still, we are way away from the target. And uh, you can see there is a capacity enhancement also if you use FP3O4 as a graphene as a catalyst. Now, so these are the mechanisms that uh, I have developed based on the electron microscopy studies. So I am skipping this part in order to quickly summarize the talk. So these are the number of catalysts. I have shown you one catalyst that catalyst can lower the desorption temperature of magnesium hydride. And these are the catalysts that we have used. And, uh, you see that uh, we have obtained the desorption temperature of 220 degrees Celsius and the materials work for around 500 cycles. I am skipping all the details. And uh, now, one of the problems with these hydrides are they are hygroscopic and pyrophilic. You cannot use this hydride in an open atmosphere. Suppose you are using hydride based tank in your vehicle and somehow some accident occurs, then you cannot go directly to the mechanic and say that uh, look, uh, change my tank or uh, repair my tank. Because these hydrides are hygroscopic, as soon as you open the tank for uh, changing the material, it will catch fire. So you cannot use this uh, hydride in a practical application. This is one of the problems. So in our other work, we try to address this problem. So what we have done, we have covered this hydride, or we have engulfed this hydride inside the graphene. So this is uh, one of the video. I think it will not run. So there's some problem with the system. So uh, we have shown in this video, that uh, normally the hydride catches fire, but uh, if we cover this graphene, uh, just a, give me a sec. Yeah. But if you have a graphene covered hydride, 
this side right uh, we have used in a fuel cell this is a prototype fuel cell that we have used so 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 I am showing you only one video where we have shown that the hybrid captured hybrid engulfed by the grip it does not catch fire. So you can see we have used in you know, a prototype fuel cell. These are the this is the hydrogen based container. This is the container. In the picture the picture is not very good here. So there is no problem. This is a prototype fuel cell. And when we have used this hydride to the fuel cell, and once we take out Generally, it catches fire, but when we decorate this hydride with graphene, it does not catch fire. We have left the hydride for around five to six months, and it does not catch fire. I am not showing you the other video due to scarcity of the time, which indicates that the hydride catches fire <coughs> when we covered it with the graphene. Now, uh, I am summarizing that one two minutes. So, okay, now what exactly happened is that, so you can see this is the hydride, these are the hydride surface and these are the hydrogen. So when this hydrogen atoms comes at the surface, the oxygen molecule reacts with the hydride, hydrogen at the surface and the material catches fire. But if you have a graphene cover, then this graphene cover will not allow oxygen to come to the hydrogen atom. And before that, hydrogen atoms become hydrogen molecule, and when hydrogen molecule reacts with oxygen, then the reaction is not so heat absorbing that the hydride catches fire. So these are the TM images which shows that the hydride are engulfed inside the graphene selected area diffraction pattern. We have shown that hydride does not affect the hydrogen storage capacity of the material, and it even remains intact after 30 or even say 300 cycles. We have done up to 300 cycles. The hydride material remains as it is. Graphene remains as it is. So now this is the application that I am saying that exhaust heat will come in and this is the hydride tank that I have shown and this hydride tank can be used in a three pillar which in fact we are using at Banaras in the university. So with this hydride tank we can also close the fuel cell and uh, as most of the speaker has already <coughs> discussed about the national hydrogen energy mission. So with this I would like to thank you all and I hope uh, I am on time. I thank you. Thank you. Very, 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 very nice. <coughs> and you only one question, please, ma'am. Yes, sir. It just coming in our mind, and palladium absorbs also. Normally, and it uh, what is known as palladium? It's volume, and we can uh, we can uh, we can do it for a large number of cycles. So why do we, why do not we use palladium? You said you store nine hundred times its volume, but the weight percent of the uh, hydrogen that PD absorbed is around one to two weight percent. And the target that I have shown in the beginning is a 5.5 weight percent. So although volumetric meets the target, but weight percent wise, gravimetric wise, it does not meet the target. So people are not using PD. And also PD after repeating cycle, after 500 to 700 cycles, the structure of the PD changes somehow the grain bent. That's why PD is not very successful practical application. Okay. Thank you. Now I'd like to 
called Dr. Swasish Mandal, WBSPSC, West Virginia University, I think. Okay. Okay. Culture, yeah, boy. All right. So, first of all, thank you for staying late. And uh, thank you, uh, thank Professor Anura for uh, inviting me and also Professor Pande for telling me about this uh, workshop and about this conference. So, I'm going to talk about uh, something uh, that is extended from what from where Professor Pande this morning left that we can design material <coughs> using first principle in, in hand in uh, with in hand with, uh, with experiment, but also further exploring the opportunities and going beyond the experiment and predicting ahead of time as ahead of experiment. And for that, we need chemical accuracy in first principle method. And we're going to talk about that, mostly on strongly corrective material or quantum material. <laughs> and most of my work that I'm going to present today were done when I was uh, when I was postdoc at Rutgers. So I'd like to thank my uh, previous advisors at Rutgers, my collaborator at NIST, and also Professor Andy my PhD advisor for Pontanity, encouraging me. <laughs> and uh, if I get some time, I'd like to show. Uh, some uh, recent work uh, done by my student that I will view. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, my collaborators within WBU and also outside experimental theories, <coughs> and definitely the funding agency, DOD, as well as NSF. So, <coughs> this is uh, the screenshot of materials project database. This is a database which can host millions of electronic properties of materials, of hundreds of thousands of materials. And we love DFT because it has changed the paradigm in our field and in this conference, we saw, saw how, uh, how uh, uh, powerful this, this uh, method is. So this was also the beginning of uh, using data science, using this data to predict materials, properties, um, uh, you know, accelerated material discoveries through data science. And for that, you need data, and then DFT was handy. And then this, this materials project data <laughs> were formed. So if you look carefully, you will find that these uh, databases, the building built using DFT, often predict incorrect uh, results. For example, iron oxide, cobalt oxide are, are wide band of material or more insulator, but DFT will predict meta. And vice versa. So there are problems. So, so we can actually divide uh, two classes of material. One is weakly correlated material, where the uh, the uh, electron motion is influenced only by Pauli's exclusion principle. And then we can also divide in another class where 
all his exclusion principle is not only enough, but we need to actually uh, include the interaction between each other. And this kind of averaging is not going to work. We need to go beyond the mean field. <laughs> and we need to go, you know, to build a database and use data science and materials prediction. We need to also come up with an alternative database which is based on beyond the ultimate. Now, <laughs> with that, I'd like to give a very brief introduction of what is strongly correlated material. So the weakly correlated material system is something like everything is uh, like one car's motion in the highways, not kindly dictated by other cars, but not, not very much dictated by other cars. But for strongly correlated materials, it would be like this. So everyone's motion is kind of related to others. And it happens in materials and subtract technological materials like high temperature superconductors, photovoltaics, but the electrons become massive just because of this interaction which becomes so important. Now, <clears throat> going beyond DFT, there are fast few uh, fast principle methods that we have uh, for solids that, uh, that is popular. One is called TW, another is called dynamical mean field theory with DFT. And, other, and also within the umbrella of DFT, we have hybrid DFT as well as meta GDS, which I'm also listing as the beyond DFT method. And we have these kind of choices uh, for solids. Now, we do not know which met method is good for given correlated material. And this has to be again fast principle, no tuning parameter. We can write down a model and solve a problem using hundreds of parameters, and that's not something we, you know, we are going to do for materials for prediction ahead of experiment. It has to be parameter-free. These are the methods, <coughs> these are the approaches, <coughs> so the first principle approaches uh, uh, listed, but we just do not know which one is going to work, because these are all approximated methods, which we not uh, We need to have a head-to-head -head com comparison, especially comparing with the experiments, and here I'm going to talk about mostly on photo emission, and namely angle reserve photo emission for RPS. And then build up a database eventually. So head-to-head -head comparison between the, between the method could give us some clue which method is going to win for given correlated material or quantum material. So with that in mind, when I was Rutgers, we started building a database which is not uh, hosted at NIST. Uh, this uh, this is the original version of DFT database called Jarvis. Uh, we have created another leg called Beyond DFT, part, and which is now you know free to use. And if you want to know more uh, about the Jarvis, here is our review article. If you just go to this website and do a little registration, you would uh, uh, see our database, and then you can. Click on, you can interactively select the elements from the periodic table to list down some of the materials, and then you can click and you can see how the DMFT compares with, say, hybrid, and the hybrid compares with beta GG, etc. So it is all there. So you just, it will be also good for the experimentalist to take a look at it, like how these methods are doing head to head. So let, let me go a little bit. On the construction of the database, these are some of the technicalities, so I'll just go a little faster. So the, the DFT part of all this beyond DFT method is the starting point, and it is done within all electron method. So whatever differences we're going to see is coming due to the due to the method itself, not due to something else. We we'll all have a set, same basis given by the B2K. Absolutely. We're going to use meta GGA called um, um, modified Bakey and Johnson. Hybrid DFT will use Bakey, we will also use the flavor of HSC. GW, <coughs> we have started using FHI gap code, but eventually we had to build our own code, uh, which is also free code for five GW, it's an all electron GW code. And then DFT plus DMFT, you have been working uh, for a long time with, with uh, Radcast group. And uh, this will develop a drug as a full cell phone system, take uh, DFT plus DMT. So, all this work, the starting point we don't do. Starting point is our LDA, and then we're going to use the various methods, various approximations. Now, a little bit about DMFT, because I don't think there's another talk 
of, of DMFT. So uh, the dynamical mean field theory method is another way of solving quantum main body problem. And I can explain this in a, in a, in a textbook kind of example. So suppose you have, you have a spin and that is surrounded by some neighboring spin. You can convert this problem to one spin interacting with the average of the rest of the spin, like the mean field. Similarly, Gabi Cochlear and Rodgers and Anton George converted the many electron problem to an impurity problem where the, where the impurity atoms are the correlated atom interacted through the path of non interacting electrons. Those non interacting electrons at the DFT level, and this path is is talking through the through the uh, talking to the ion, the correlated ion, through the hybridization function, which is strongly uh, frequency dependent. So the correlation is included through this by this. So this is how uh, this is the heart of the DMFT. But in order to work for materials, you have to marry it with DFT to give <coughs> the lattice. The lattice, the lattice problem in our implementation is the all electron uh, in two K. And the atomic problem is by solved by continuous time Monte Carlo, quantum Monte Carlo at finite temperature. So let me give you a little analogy with DFT and DMFT. So in DFT, every point in space in crystal is mapped to electron gas problem through the density in LDA, through the gradient of density in GDA. In DMFT, every ion, the like correlated ion, is mapped with, is embedded with the with the electron bath, and this this uh, this ion is uh, is connected to the hybridization function, which is strongly frequency dependent. So this is how we can actually uh, you know make an analogy with with DFT. So the, the great thing about DFT is that the density is mapped, and this is how it works amazingly. Here you can see that my correlated atom is mapped and embedded with, uh, with, with the C of the non-interacting electron. But then, the, then there's a, uh, always hybridization, which depends on the energy, which depends on the time, actually. So in, in, the, in the computational level, it is much more complex. And it has uh, you know, multi-level self-consistency. And where our code is fully self-consistent. <coughs> and there's no downfoldings. So you can write the total energy down. Everything is done on the imaginary axis, imaginary frequency, and then we you know, make it uh, to, uh, to the real axis and get the electronic properties. So now we want to apply various methods. So first step, first uh, set of uh, materials is binary transition metal oxide. This consisting of, say, uh, iron oxide, nickel oxide, cobalt oxide, and Manganese oxide, they are not insulated. And we're, we're talking about the antiferromagnetic phase, where, and then we're going to compare with the experiment, photo emission experiment. So the blue dots are the photo emission experiment and inverse photo emission experiment. And this one, the GGA with for MNO, it, does, it, it reduces the gap, it does not have the proper gap. But if you put some U, which is a tuning parameter, you can you can actually get it would uh, it would get match for MBJ and B3 if it also works GW and so so is DMFT so very similar looking structure with MNO if you go with cobalt oxide so your lattice model will be same the same kind of physics you should expect but then if you do GGA it is going to show metal if you do meta GGA it is going to show metal if you do GW it is going to show metal. The only hybrid functional can actually open up the gap and DMFT. And so this so we learned that for binary transition metal oxide, the two methods are going to work. One is hybrid functional and is DMFT. 